Yo, what's good, boxing fans? So we just got news a couple days ago, I guess official news, that Canelo Alvarez on July 12th on Showtime pay-per-view will be facing Cuba's Arislandi Lara. Now, I got to give major props to Canelo for this because this is a fight <laughs> that the fans were actually asking for. Now, before I go any further, the fight itself will not be for the 154-pound title, the IBF title, in which um, Arislandi Lara holds. Now, Lara was supposed to have a fight with Ishe Smith. Likely, he's going to be taken out of that fight. You know, it makes, you know, obviously makes sense for him to bow out of that fight. And the fight likely will be at a 155-pound catch weight, as Richard Schaefer reported that the fight won't be for the title. And when he was asked about the weight, they said it was going to be a, a pound more or less, which means it's probably going to be at 155 156 but when i think about it i don't think that affects really much of the fight itself i mean i i was one that has been saying that canelo alvarez is growing out of the junior middleweight division as as what we saw in the angulo fight where he couldn't even make 154 and just gave um angulo that cash you know for not being able to make the weight in this situation I like I said I I just don't think he can make that weight anymore and they're trying to make it fair and and to be honest for Aries Landy Lara I don't think it's going to really bother him either because he's not a small junior middleweight to begin with so I think if the fight's at 155 I think that's okay you know or 156 I I, I think it will be all right and you know that's weight that Lara doesn't have to cut like an extra one or two pounds and when you're getting to that point of like cutting weight one or two pounds does make a difference but the fight itself, man, I, I think this is an excellent fight for Canelo Alvarez. I think this is an excellent fight for Arizlandi Lara. And to be honest with you, I think this is a 50-50 fight. Now, when you look at it on paper, Canelo Alvarez is um, the A-side in this situation. But when you look at the resumes, um, Lara has fought the tougher competition on a more consistent basis. I mean, he he also fought Alfredo Angulo. He fought a Paul Williams. He fought a Carlos Molina in a fight that I think he might have lost. And, you know, he's coming off a dominant victory over Austin Trout, who really gave Canelo all he could handle you know and some people say that Canelo maybe lost that fight I'm not one of those people I thought he edged it out but I mean the fight was as close as you can make it down the stretch now the difference with both guys leading into this fight is with Canelo for the, for like years prior to you know him fighting an Austin Trout we were waiting for him to get in the ring with um, a, a, a top 154 guy and not a blown up welterweight like guys like Jose Cito Lopez and, you know, Victor Ortiz was supposed to fight him as well. He would have been another blown up welterweight, even though I think he probably would have been OK at junior middleweight. But in, in this instance, when you look at Ken, when you look at. Like I said, the, the opposition that Lara has faced, he seems like realistically has more experience. And, you know, you can't also take away his pedigree. I mean, the guy, he's, you know, one of those strict Cuban fighters that, you know, they carry that, that Cuban pedigree, that amateur style. But Lara, I will say, I will make a case for is he's seems in the in the last several fights give or take that he's adjusting to the pro style M more so than like i would say a guillermo rigandau who is don't get me wrong an excellent excellent fighter but tends to draw back to that amateur style where it's just like obviously the whole sport of boxing is uh you know hit and not get hit but he doesn't he, he doesn't let his hands go maybe as much as he should at this level. Lara on the other hand, you 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 see that. I mean the, the Trout fight is a good example. I mean he dropped Austin Trout. And so did Canelo Alvarez, but I, I think I mean clearly Lara had the more dominant performance uh, against Austin Trout, who who's a solid fighter and still is a solid fighter. But this matchup is I mean I, I mean when they when they announced it I, I mean I not that I'm very critical of Canelo anyway but I mean I had to give him major props man because he's given the fans what they want and he stepped up to the plate and said yo this is the guy you want me to fight yo let's get it on and as boxing fans that's all you can really ask for so that will be taking place July 12th 
uh, on Showtime pay-per-view. And Oscar De La Hoya was tweeting about, you know, they're going to stack the undercard, which just seems to be a trend that Golden Boy is going after now with all their pay-per-views. And, you know, it is a good idea. But, you know, at the same time, it, I don't think f f for the sake of the casual fans, the undercard is doing anything for them more so than us boxing fans. Now, the best that could come out of that is some of these fights, like, for instance, the mayweather Madonna fight. Uh, where you have a Khan Collazo, uh, uh, Carlos Molina Jr., and Broner, you know, those can make maybe for uh, exciting fights. I mean, who knows? I mean, I think Khan Collazo is going to be a good fight, uh, better than uh, what, what some are expecting. But uh, again, uh, Canelo Alvarez, you know, the thing with him is, you know, he fights Austin Trout, and that was a fight that a, a lot of fans, including myself, were calling for. And he gets that fight, but then leaps like three stratospheres away and, and gets a fight with Floyd Mayweather, where in hindsight, he just wasn't ready for the fight. And I think, you know, whether people want to argue with me or not, I think the catch weight maybe played a small part, even though I think at 154, if Floyd fought him there, it would have been the same thing. I think it was just Floyd being Floyd and getting the upper hand and basically saying like, look, man, you accepted it. And, and I agree with, with all catchweight fights like that. I mean, that goes for fighters like Cotto, who accepted the catchweight with Pacquiao and, you know, other fights. If you accept the catchweight and you sign the contract, that's on you. You know, if you can't make the weight, like like when, when uh, Freddie Roach, you know, approached Shane Mosey or when Shane Mosey approached to, to get a, a Pacquiao fight with Ricky, you know, after the Ricky Hatton fight, you know, he's, you know, he couldn't make 143 like Freddie Roach was insisting. He said, no, man, I can't, I'm not going to take the fight then. You know, at some point, man, you you know, you really got to think of your health and, 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 and you know, money will be there if you're, uh, you know, if you're a superstar boxer. I mean, there's always going to be options for you. But, um, you know, in, in this instance, though, it's, the, the fight's probably going to be at 155. I don't think the weight's going to be an issue for either guy. And, you know, I think we're going to get a spectacular fight, man. I mean, I think it's a clash of styles that could be trouble in a way for either man you know because austin trout i mean excuse me uh there's landy lara one thing i will question maybe a little bit is his chin you know if you crack him hard enough has been proven you know he, he you know he, he may get a little shaky and, and with canelo it, it's a situation where we haven't seen him fight another uh boxer per se besides uh, an austin trout and a floyd mayweather and both of those fights you know, he had a tough time with one, and he clearly lost the other. And now you're getting another fighter. I don't want to say who mirrors a Floyd Mayweather or an Austin Trout, but, you know, he's a southpaw. He, he's, he's a defensive fighter as well, a pretty good counterpuncher, has good movement. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how Canelo adapts to that again because, you know, now he's facing uh, a, another legit 154-pounder who's, you know, not going to be having to cut that much weight or as much weight. So, like, like I said, it's a 50-50 fight to me, man. I mean, I'm obviously going to make a prediction down the road. I mean, this fight's not until July, but I'm excited for this fight. And from what I was hearing, you know, the following week would would have been, or I mean, I'll say right now would have been because it seems like this fight may not happen now. Uh, uh, Triple G Golovkin, you know, Golovkin versus Chavez Jr., which would have followed that, you know, the week after, which July would have been on Smash. But uh, Bob Arum wants to sign Chavez to an extended contract. And, you know, considering the news we're seeing now with Mikey Garcia filing a lawsuit for with top rank, you know, trying to get out of his contract. And Timothy Bradley had to sign an extension on his contract to get the Pacquiao fight. I mean, it's kind of crazy <laughs> what's going on now, man. But I, I think, you know, getting back to Canelo Lara, you know, I think this is just a, a solid fight for the boxing fans. I mean, I think this is uh, something that... Um, we, you know, in, in, in a rare instance, we call for it and we got it. So much props to Golden Boy and much props to Canelo for making this fight. So I'll be back within maybe the month and a half or so. You know, I just wanted to speak on it real quick. I guess this is like a little preview of the fight. But, uh, you know, like I always say, subscribe, hit the links, you know, hit the comment section. Let me know what you think of this fight. You know, I think I, I mean, I really can't wait for this fight. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll be back with a prediction on that probably in a month, a month and a half. But stay tuned. I got more predictions coming up and I'll be back soon. Peace.